Right guys, today uh, my intention is that we discuss the, another type of function, but really a function which is closely related to the exponential function. Okay. So I'm actually going to exploit what, all what we've done using uh, to learn exponential functions to try to introduce these type of functions altogether. So that's why I'm writing the exponential stroke logarithm function. Well, my advice to you, whenever you think of an exponential function, you mustn't overlook the existence of the logarithm function and its relationship with the exponential function. It must be always something which is at your fingertips. Okay. okay. So, I think um, what I want to, 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 to recap with you is um, the discussion we had concerning the relationship of a graph of a function and the data of its inverse. Do you remember what was the relationship? We said if we've got a, um, let's say we've got a very small case sketch here, I've got a function here, maybe it's running this way, it's a function f of x, and then if it has got a second function f, second function of x, how is this graph related to the graph of the inverse? This is f of x. How is this graph related to that? That is very important for you to understand what I'm going to do here. What did you say? How are they related? The values they swap. Say something which is more obvious to everybody. Yes. The graph, this graph, the graph of the inverse is actually a reflection of this one across the y is equal to x. But y is equal to x is the bisector of the first and second, this first and third quadrant. That is y is equal to x. Then the inverse, maybe let me pick a color there. The inverse will symmetrically be positioned. Then I will the distance there and the distance there, they are equal. So the inverse will cut somewhere there and they go this way. So then they lie symmetrical along that. That is very important. Altogether, that is actually what is going to help me easily make sense of what we are going to, talk, to discuss here. Now let me have a Let's have a, a situation here whereby we have got our x axis. Right, we've got our y axis there. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to insert our y. Is equal to x. That is our function. Uh, y is equal to x. Is everybody there? Is it? So let's take this to this to be one where the exponential function cuts the axis at zero. So there is the exponential function. Now together, decreases that side. Now if we follow what we've just been discussing here about the, the graph of the inverse function, now with this function, let's write it here. This is y is equal to f of x equal to eight to the power of x. Now together. So this function, this domain, which we didn't discuss before, but this domain, you can see, is defined on all the real line. And this, and this range starts just above zero, or just above zero, taking all the values going up. Now it's their positive values, isn't it? I would say, can you see that? Okay. We also discussed the decay, isn't it? That day, the, the, the function function is going down with decay and growth altogether. So this is growth. So now, if we were to get the inverse of this function, 
would get let's say we get the graph of the index of this function would symmetrically draw that line there at 90 degrees and the granite across we expect that distance there and that distance to be equal but this is a rough sketch that's what we, we expect isn't it so we expect one to be here so we can say now the point one zero lies on the on the on the on the graph so that's the zero of the function so now if we do something similar let's say we take a line of symmetry again there across the line of symmetry and measure the same distance there and there you can see that you've got another point on the graph isn't it then we go on and come here you exactly the same thing cross that line there you expect to go that as you can see as we are going closer and closer to this this function this value of the function is the value of an x which is somewhere there this one is the value of an x which is somewhere there so what does what does it look like as we are going closer to zero what are the values becoming smaller and smaller is it going down is it to negative so if we come on the other side we would say maybe somewhere there draw something similar just to reflect that point that is reflection we did reflection in school into under transformations isn't it so we are just reflecting there so then what we are going to have at the end of a good day in good discussion of this thing we are going to have a graph which is joining all these points nice going through one there Say what is this thing? Right, guys. Do you see that the graph is it's a rough sketch, but I think it gives some idea of what is, what is happening, isn't it? So then we've got another function. Once we've got that function symmetric on the all along the y-axis, and knowing what we've discussed before, we can claim that that function is what is the inverse of the exponential function. Out of Okay. So now this function needs a name. The name given this func to this function is called this is y equals to logarithm base a this same base here isn't it? logarithm of x how to better that's the function logarithm so now i've actually whether it's new to all of you or it's new to some of you what is important is i've actually introduce the function graphically from what you understand before that's why i'm saying i'm going to exploit what we know about the function so far to introduce the thing now the, the most important thing now would be try to unpack how does this function evaluate how is it evaluated does it do it exactly the same thing like is it is it an inverse like if i compose it with uh that is it going to be the identity how to get that's there how are they guys okay so let's maybe are there any questions maybe as far as the graph is concerned you go to your textbook check where you're doing logarithm function i think you will see this graph in a smooth way as it's supposed to be how to get now hoping that you understand that now i'll now move on to discuss the how this we can evaluate how to evaluate the function and they try to reveal how is it related to the exponential function. That's fine. Yes. No, it depends. If I'm say sketch the graph of a logarithm or let's write the graph of the exponential function, you can just draw it like I'm drawing it. Sketch just to give me an idea what you know that's functional. But the most important thing again to highlight before I forget 
I think the properties of local information, you must see them on the graph. First of all, it does, is not, the graph does not, is not defined for negative numbers. Do you see that? Try to also on a calculator and say log of minus one. I think you'll get something like an error, isn't it? It's actually telling you that this, the, this minus one is not in the domain of local area. So next from zero, from just after zero, the function is increasing steadily. Actually, before one, it's increasing very fast. Then after one, it increases a bit steadily, and so on. All together, that is important. And the exponential function, I am telling you in this case, is the inverse of this thing. That's how I draw this graph, because I'm taking this thing for an inverse of the exponential function. That's why I said at the beginning, in future, when you think of an exponential function, you must never think of it independent of the logarithm function. You must see them as one, uh, two sides of the same coin. Are we together, guys? Okay. Now let's discuss from how the exponential function works. Let's see how the, the logarithm works. Let me show you what, how to work. Let's say we start with a two. We start with a, a two. There is a 2. We power, give it the power x. Then what do you get there? We get what? That is exponentiation, is it? If I was dealing with a function which involves 2, I would be having f of x equals to 2 to the power of x, is it? So as it is here, I'm, I'm devaluing f of x at the value 3, is it? So what do I get there? I get eight. Is it? That is in this direction. I can even attempt to say this function is the x potential function of x base two. You see how the logarithm function is, is written? It's written this way. That's the that's the, the I think that's the most comfortable way to write it. But the exponential function, we can even write it this way, without the word expo. What is expo? It's just a name that is a function to exponentiation. And that one is a log. Log is a name. But what is important, what is essential is to understand how the function works. How to get Now, notice that this is in one direction. Now, if I was given 8 here, and we are told that 8 is a result of elevating 2 to a certain power. You will be saying 2 to a certain power, which is what? x. Then you are asked, what is x? I'm telling you now, if I've got something like this, if I've got something like this, if I've got 2 to the power x is equal to 2, I'm simply saying logarithm of 8 base 2 is equal to x. All together, guys. Okay. I'm still going to highlight that. Okay, maybe let me highlight it somewhere here and write it here. What I've just written there, in general, I will say, if I've got a to the power x being equals to m, that's a, a relationship expressed exponentially. A relationship between A and the M involving X, isn't it? But what I'm say, what I've just said there with the cosine two and eight, I've just said there that means that the logarithm base A of M is equal to X. So that's still a relationship, but expressed in a logarithmic language. And the x is still the same x. Altogether, we're just placing the same relationship but in a different language. Is that right? So what do what did you see? I part from, from A, exponential get to M. Then I reverse the process base A from M and get back to X. Altogether, that is the, the relationship there. Any question there? Any question?
Now, now let's suppose this one is, a, is an obvious thing which you just like we can see because we, we started from there. Let's say we're 27 equals to 3 to the power of x. So it, it tells you this statement says if I elevate x to a certain exponent x, I'm going to get 27. Then the question says solve this equation. That's an exponential equation. Isn't it? So you need to find what x. So now let me show you a way which you can use even at uh, school. I, I don't know whether I, do you think we look at the function at school this is? Yes. Maybe you I know I hope you are familiar to this. Let's say I that equation I've got something like that. This I can do because I know seven is the power of three. But now I want to know what power. This is what I can do. I divide there by three. What do I get? Nine. I divide there by three. What do I get? What do I get? Three. I divide there by three. What do I get? One. So which means now this three to the power x is actually three to the power three. Okay, and that is what 27 is it? So then from there, comparing the exponents, the base is the same. Comparing the exponents, you can now write and say x, therefore, x is equal to 3. All together. So that x there, according to this language here, that is the logarithm of. 27 base 3. Am I making myself clear? Okay. Another question? Another question? Sorry? Okay. So I think then from there we know the, I think you remember the rules of exponents, isn't it? And with all those rules of exponents we can actually also translate them and talk about them, not Look at the language. Can you look at that briefly? Right. Let's say um, right. Right. Let's take. M, that we just take it, take X, say M is equal to that. Isn't it? We know that that means logarithm of M base A is equal to X. And next let's say N is equal to A power Y. And then we know that that means logarithm base A of N is equal to Y. Isn't it? Okay. Now I'm trying, I don't know if this is going to work. Let me draw a line there and say exponential exponential and then say here logarithmic all together. I would say a to the power x multiplied by a to the power y is equal to a to the power x plus y. Is that right? Yes or no? But now a to the power x times a to the power x is actually n. M times n. Is it? Yes or no? Which means this is this m times n is actually that. Therefore, is it? Now, what is the logarithm now? When I, when I was now talking about what is logarithm then of logarithm base a of m times n? There is the logarithm. What is it? X plus y, is it? But what is x? X is logarithm of m. What is y? Y is logarithm of n. So if we can say now here, the logarithm is x plus y. I hope you can see that here. What am I doing here? I'm using exactly this.
to take it to the local language. Isn't it? There's exponential language there, and I'm using exactly these two, these, these, these two equivalences here, and taking to that. But then from there, I can now say x is logarithm base a of m, y is logarithm base a of n. All together, guys. Okay, let's now come to a power x over a power y. According to our rules of exponents, this is what? This is a x minus y. Is it? And this is exactly the same thing as m divided by n. So where are we? Sorry, this is y, not y. Y. Where are we? We are there. Is it? Are we there? I mean, here in this relationship, we must have got an expression like this. Then you can change it to an exponential language like this. Then you say logarithm of what? m divided by n. What is equal to? That goes down. Is it? Then this becomes x minus y. Then, same story again, that is log of m minus log a plus a of n. So, I'll just discuss these two, but all the other rules, I think they are going to follow suit. But I also, I'm also interested in highlighting this one. First of all, if I hit a, if I hit a, what power would that elevate a to? Let me put a box there. What power would that elevate a to in order to get 1? Zero, isn't it? Then, where did the graph of logarithm function cast the y axis? At 1, x equals 1, isn't it? There is the relationship expressed here. What does this say? This is saying log base a of 1 is equal to 0. Do you see that? That is very important. Another thing, if I've got a and I want to get a, what power would I elevate a to in order to get a? 1. So you put 1 there. What does that say? It's saying logarithm of a base a is equal to 1. Are we together, guys? Yes or no? Are we there? Okay. Let me clean up a bit. Um, what I want to talk about now is, um, in addition to this, is when I've got a to the power of y to the power of x. So that looks like a 9. That's a. What is this equal to? What is this equal to? Okay, let me, let me move that x, sorry. Let me move that x. I want to put something else. Let me remove that x. Let me put p, sorry. Let me put p. What will be, what will be this? a to the power y p. How to get it? Now, if we take this and apply what would be the logarithm of, let's say this number is, um, is what, is um, L, let's just say L. What would be the logarithm base A of L? It's called to Y, Y, P. Good. But notice that A to the power Y is actually N. So, which means now I'm saying logarithm of um, n to the power p, which is that? That is n to the power p. Is it to the power p is actually equals to the y p, which is the same thing as p y. Do you agree? You agree? Okay. So what but what is y? What is y? 
no gari mu n is it basic do you agree with me so which means i can write, write this thing as p log base a so i forgot a there base a of n that is also one of the properties of local which you must keep in a toolbox and use it look this one is a sum of two logarithms which means i can use this property to write this expression with only one log so in other words, these are two terms i can reduce them to one term the same thing applies to division you can have two terms involving minus sign there you can change them to one term involving division now here you can have something like this you can change them change that to a product of this number p and the local i will clear the guy okay so now what i'm trying to, to invite you to you know, to look at exercises where exactly they're saying express this as with a single log these are some of the things you are going to apply and uh, revise some more in your what in your notes or in your textbook all together okay now base a it's just an arbitrary base which we're talking about. We don't know whether it's two, whether it's ten, whatever. What is an what is the everyday logarithm base you've been using in school? What base was that? What base was that? Come again? I'm not hearing what you're saying. Base ten. So thank you. Because our Logarithms. As I'm not, I'm not talking about logarithms. Now our base, everyday base at school, is uh, 10. Is it? Because we're actually using decimal numbers. This means our base is 10. We're together, is it? Yeah. But now that doesn't eliminate that there's no other base you can use. All together. Okay. Now um, I'm not really sure how we can um, motivate for this one, but if you look at your calculator. This logarithm base 10, let's write it this way. Logarithm base 10 is normally written simple as log x. Why? Ignoring 10 there because it is assumed that it's understood that our base is 10. Isn't it? No. If you look at your function, if you look at your calculator, you will see also something written like this ln. Normally, we just pronounce it as lin. What is this? <laughs> uh, what is this? Natural logarithm. Natural logarithm. Did you, did you see that we are reversing English there? Natural, I mean, the way it's written is natural logarithm. Is it? It should be actually, in English, it should be nl. Is it? Okay. That tells you something. This is not English. <laughs> This is not easy. This is actually Latin languages. Latin languages, you don't say a beautiful girl. You say girl beautiful. <laughs> Altogether. So in this case, this thing is loga re de mo natural. People will say this thing this way, more or less this way, loga natural. Our people are speaking languages which are of Latin origin, like Spanish, Portuguese and all those things, they will put it this way, logarithm natural, but in English you say natural logarithm. So, which means that that symbol, its origins is Latin, is that right? So, also they say Latin languages. Okay, so I hope you understand that thing. Now, what is the base here? That is what is important. Now, if I write then as a function, you must always understand that the base of this logarithm is a number we call E, after a certain gentleman was working with these things called Euler. So, that. So, whenever we see this, we must understand that we are dealing with a, a base E. And why it's called the natural logarithm? Because this number E is, a, is actually an irrational number like pi, and uh, it comes out up in many phenomena in a natural way. I think that's why they call it natural logarithm. Even if you look at it, you will see later on we discuss uh, the, the 
the mathematical expression for a current uh, current in a circuit which involves a resistor and the something I can't remember. I'll, I'll check that when we get there. You will find that it involves this E. Even the population growth, you will find that somehow, somehow it involves E. I think population growth, if I'm not mistaken, the function of population growth as a function of time is something like initial population E power T multiplied with some coefficient which has got to something to do with the population growth rate. Altogether, then because of that now we're coming up with natural uh, phenomena like that, then we call it natural logarithm. So now if you want to go top of rules and then say lean of M N, it will just call exactly the same thing. Lean of M plus lean of N. Then you say lean of M over N. Then you get that as lean of M minus lean of N. So it works out exactly the same thing, same way. Then lean of um, lean of what? Let's say lean of N power P. Then it will be P lean of N. All together. Then what will happen is uh, what I'm trying to say actually is that all the properties of logarithms we have we got here. Even then, even if we say lean E, then this is equal to one because because this is log of E base E. So you see this exactly what we did said. They said the lean logarithm of A base A is um, is um, Logarithm of a plus a is one, so it works out exactly the same. Indeed. Now, once we have learned the logarithm function, now as an inverse of an exponential function. Now, if I'm having this y equals to e, sorry, sorry, not e. I want to say y equals to a power x, and I've got another function y is equal to log base a of x. These two functions, guys, they're tight. Whether a is e, whether a is 5, these two functions, they're inverses. Am I making myself clear? Now, talking about inverse functions, if you compose a function with its inverse in whichever order you do it, what do you normally get? What do you going to get? X. Now it's the same. You get, you get the identity. Indeed. Now, how do you compose these two functions here? Is that we said? If you compose two functions, you're just cascading. Let's say I'm saying f of f second function of x. We expect that these functions are inverses. This must give us what x. And actually, the function, the composite function itself, is an identity. So now, in this case here, if my f is a logarithm, sorry, if my x is an exponential function, then I've got a to the power. But what should go there? The inverse. But we say the inverse is what is logarithm, is it? Then which means I'm going to have log base a of x, then this must give me x. Try to write yourself the opposite order or the reverse order of this. Try to write it the other way around. Try to write it there before we discuss it. Write it yourself. Right, who can volunteer tell me what to write? What should you write? Log base A, isn't it? Then, then the, sorry, A, the exponent x, then it must give me x. 
So I got that equality there. I want to wait again. I follow what I'm discussing there. So how is this going to help us? Remember the other day, what did I say? I said the inverse function, the, no, that idea of an inverse is the one which makes equations possible to solve, isn't it? That's exactly what makes equations possible to solve. So how are we going to use this? How are we going to use this? That's the next, that's the next discussion. Let's, um, Let me now, I'm talking about equations now. Let me maybe say the stroke, exponential, logarithmic, logarithmic, stroke, exponential equations. Mm, this is uh, logarithmic. Now we've got our function there, our system of x is there. If we've got an exponential, a exponential function there, there is uh, our one. Let's just take a standard exponential function. This is a equals to, let me take a number, like let's say this is 3 to the power of x. Now, if I pick a certain value, let's say on the y-axis somewhere here. I say there's a value there. I'm going to just magnify this uh, this uh, line here and say it's going so high that this is equals to 81. Then that value 81 corresponds to this point here. Then the x, which is gives us 81, is somewhere there. And this x is what I'm looking for. So that is the equation graphically. So what am I saying? I'm saying 3 to the power of x equals to 80, 80, 1. If one way of doing this thing, I can do what I did before. Just break down 81 into its power, isn't it? Then say log base 3 of of what? Of, of, no, of 3 to the power of x is equal to log base 3 of 81. What am I doing there? I'm applying the function log as an inverse function to exponential on both sides. Isn't it? What's going to happen here? Do you remember the property? So I'm going to have x log 3, 3 is equal to log base 3 of 81. Is it? Does that make sense? Can I simplify from there? What can I simplify? Log 3 base 3. What is that equal to? So which means x is equal to log base 3 81. That is the answer. If I don't know what to do, I can give that expression like that. So far, mathematically, all the mathematics is correct. I might not know what is the log, but we can do that because we know that what 81 is 3 to the power 4. So we can say now this is equal to log 3 power 4 base 3. Then we apply the property again. I think we can say the end here. Therefore, x is equal to 4. All together. Similarly, if this function was not, was not, um, if the base here was E, would ex apply lean exactly the same way. All together. Now, because lean is on the calculator and the log base 10 is on the calculator. Now, if I get something, you get, you get a, a problem like this. 2 to the power 2x equals to 15, for example. It's crazy to imagine that 15 is the power of 2, isn't it? So what we did there with the calculation of dividing by 2, trying to find out how many number of factors of 2 are there, we can't do it, isn't it? 
and um, then what you can do we can either apply lean or apply log best 10 but in that case if you apply lean we'll would say lean 2 2 x equals 2 lean of 15 how to get right then after that we get 2 x lean 2 equals 2 lean 15 then what do you have there? We've got 2 times lean 2, a constant, isn't it? 2 times lean 2 is a constant, it's a number. So what are we going to do now? You can say x dividing both sides by that. You can say maybe multiply that by 1 over 2 lean 2. Then we say here lean 15 over 2 lean 2. We can give me 2 lean 2, 2 lean 2 in other terms. Say the same thing but not saying 2 lean 2. What did you say? Lean 4. You did? Because 2 lean 2 using that property again is lean 2 lean 2. That would be the same as lean of 2 to the power 2 which is equal to lean 4. So that kind of migration moving from one expression, from one type of expression of the same thing to that is very important because it can to help you to solve those things. Isn't it? So now once you have got lean 15 over lean 4, what are you going to do? Somebody is going to calculate here, it's going to calculate lean of 2, then multiply by 2. The guy is going to calculate here, just going to calculate lean of 4, it's done. How do you so some kind of economics there in terms of time, in terms of what, how much you write, it also comes in. How do you That's good. What do you think about that? So now we are in a position to solve exponential and the logarithmic equations. If I find an exponential equation difficult to express in an exponential way, I will transform it, write it in a logarithmic way and solve. Vice versa. If I find a logarithmic equation, a bit tedious, I will simplify it in the simplest form and then see if I can transform it to an exponential equation and see whether I can proceed and find the answer. How to get guys? Okay, I hope all is clear if there are no questions, but if there are questions, please ask. Any questions? So then please go to your compilation exercises and try to attempt the exercises and uh, see what challenges are there and if there are any we discuss them and that is the only way we are going to learn. Thank you for listening for now.